Hi, welcome back to Bedtime with Bruce. I am Bruce, for those of you that have not been here before, and for those of you that have been here before, welcome back. It's good to see you again. I know we took a little bit of time off. We got a little distracted uh, with some other things, and uh, we've worked everything out, and now we are back on the air. And we have decided to change the format. Um, we're still going to do some literature, I guess, in the future, and I will promise to finish up The Great Gatsby, for those of you that were following along with that. Uh, but we've decided to change it to a talk show format, and I have decided to bring on Albie, my good friend. He was the producer of the show, and he has been promoted to on-air talent. <laughs> so um, welcome, Albie, and welcome back, and welcome. Uh, thanks for coming to www.bedtimewithbruce.com. Um, so I thought we'd start out tonight by talking to Albie and uh, learning who he is and finding out a little bit about him, and then we'll just we'll see where the conversation goes. Albie, Bruce, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for uh, finding finally letting me be on camera. I've been asking since we started. Can I just be on camera a little bit for a second here or there? But now the whole show. Um, I'm, I'm excited and nervous at the same time. Well, don't be. They're they're good people. <laughs> right. So. Um, where are you from, Albie? Uh, originally Farmingdale, New Jersey, but I now reside in sunny Florida. Hmm. So we're in Florida. Um, now the world knows that. We're in Florida. Right now. <laughs> At this point. We're in a, we're an undisclosed location in Florida, and it's in a, uh, a moving vehicle. Uh, <laughs> um, this set is actually it's a trailer. Green yeah. Yeah, it's a trailer. So we could be anywhere at any time. We might be coming to a town near you, so check the website. Don't try to find us. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, okay. So what are some of the other projects you've done on the internet? Um, well, uh, you could find out more about me at albi.ws. That's my website, my blog, and uh, it'll show a little bit about what I've done. What does WS stand for? Website. <laughs> yes, uh, I got it. It was actually a gift from a friend of mine. Albi.com is going for about fifteen thousand dollars right now, so I got that WS because that was going for about fifteen dollars. Okay. So a little bit of difference in price range, and I could have done it, but then I couldn't have afforded to do anything else. So we've learned a little bit about Albi already. He is a value shopper. Yes, that's good. I, I like to save okay. money where I can. Okay. And um, also, every time I tell everybody about Albi.ws, it brings up the conversation of what does WS stand for? So I'm not the first person to ask that question. Not at all. I've never heard of it. Really? There's .info, .org, .net. Yes, and I've heard of all those. <laughs> .xxx, that's the new one. Okay, I did not know that. That's something I need to look into. Yeah. What do the three X's stand for? I'm not sure. Maybe. Sexy. Sexy. <laughs> Albi.xxx. I could probably buy that. We probably should buy that. Wait, people watching now probably just bought it. Okay. Well, enjoy your new uh, LB.XXX website. It'd be, we look forward to coming to it, and if it's got any sort of quality material on it, we will probably patronize it. <laughs> I'm speaking for myself, not LB. He does not enjoy internet pornography in any way. No, I don't. What and neither do I. What is that? Yeah, I didn't know they had porn on the internet. No. I heard that the other day, though. Really? Yeah. Maybe Apparently, I... it's not just for uh, cool shows like ours. Apparently, there is pornography on it. Are you going to look some up right now? Yeah. <laughs> is it free or do you have to pay for it? Look up LB.XXX. Okay, so what else do you have? Somebody bought it. No, they did not. Right there, just now. <laughs> oh, what, what? what else do you have? What are your other projects? Um, well, I did the website, bedtimewithbruce.com. You yes. know, obvious. I know uh, that. You, you pretty much designed it, but I did the actual clicking and copying. Yeah, you were, you were my monkey boy. Yes, I, I always will be your monkey boy. I appreciate that. I'm dedicated to you, Mr. Bruce. <laughs> um, other things I've done, I've got a Star Trek blog at trekaholic.com. Trekaholic.com. Yes. Um... I've done podcasting in the past. For who? Um, well, we have a little production company. Uh, it's called Baron Space Productions. And uh, we our most famous podcast is the Terra Nova podcast. 
Okay, Terra Nova, for those of you that don't know this, because I'm not sure what it is, that is a defunct television show, right? Yes, it was a big time travel dinosaur television show by Steven Spielberg that lasted a half a season. And uh, we did about 30 hours of podcast content with that, me and our now producer, Heather. Uh, people like her voice better than mine, I've heard. I don't. No? No. Sorry, Heather. Heather's not speaking to us anymore. <laughs> Hopefully she didn't fall asleep. <laughs> okay, so so Terra Nova podcast. Yeah, dot com. And that was pretty successful? Yeah, we had a lot of people from all over the world. Um, we got almost 10,000 downloads, so that's pretty good. And uh, a lot of people that liked it kept coming back. So it's a shame that the show didn't last because we had a little good community, but, you know. I'm, I'm happy to be with this project now, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, with with ten thousand with ten thousand uh, hits on that, it sounds like the podcast was probably a little more successful than me. <laughs> than the TV show. Than the TV show that lasted half the season. <laughs> no, I think. I'm sorry, Steven Spielberg. I love you know the rest of your body of work, but uh, the last show, ten million people watched it. So. Okay, I was just kidding. Yeah, that's actually, you could probably do a percentage. Well, you could do a percentage. Ten. <laughs> how, many, how many fair number of viewers listen to the podcast? One percent. One percent. What are you, are you excited about one percent, or are you excited that I could do the math on that? Both. Well, it was 10,000 into a million. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's one percent. Do we have a fact checker yet? Or are we just pretty It's one percent. Okay. Okay, so. That's a little bit about me. All right. A little bit about you, Bruce. Well, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> uh, I am living here in Florida in an undisclosed location. Uh, let's see what else. I do not have a job right now. This is it. This is the only thing I do. And... <laughs> Interestingly enough, we made 44 cents off someone clicking on one of our advertisements the other day. So I have actually made 44 cents off this. And um, do I get a percentage of that? <laughs> yes. And I'm going to screw you on that because you obviously don't do well with figuring out percentages. Okay. So yeah, you, yeah, sure. You get you get one percent. Okay, cool. One. Oh, right. That's pretty good. I owe you um, a half of a penny, something like that. I was thinking better part of a nickel, but I'm not good at math again. Yeah, so. you, you wish it was a nickel. Mm. Um, let's see. I I don't know. What's to tell? Um, literature. You seem to like literature. Yeah, I studied literature at uh, University of Kansas and had a lot of fun with that. And that is also why I am unemployed at this point. <laughs> It's not a real good uh, career building degree. But for those of you that are just joining us for the first time, our show was originally kind of planned out to, to read literature at night. And it was going to be public domain stuff or listener supported, you know, things that, that the viewers send in for us to read. And uh, we were just going to read literature. And yeah, I mean, we had some success with that, but it, it just wasn't as much fun as we think this is going to be for everybody. So we'll probably get back to a little bit of literature, but not as much as we were doing. Um, we got some uh, mail from some of our viewers, right? We did. We did get some viewer mail. Um, I guess I'll just read these. Something to talk about. Um, this one is from Ashley, and Ashley writes, Finally, got, down to, got to sit down and catch your show. I'm glad to hear you're going to change it up and do one book at a time. Wanted to know if it was okay with you if I shared your site with my friends on Facebook. <laughs> what is everyone else in your house doing while you're reading? Keep up the good work, Ash. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you for sending me an email, and thank you for watching us. Uh, in answer to your question, okay, I'm glad you like the new idea about one book at a time. 
I'm not sure how you're going to feel about this format change because <laughs> we're not even reading a book at this point. Um, in, in an answer to the wanted to know if it was okay if you share my site with your friends on Facebook, uh, please share share this. Please, everybody, pass this on. Um, I need to. Uh, what did she say? She said, uh, "What are other people doing in your house while this yes. is being recorded?" Other people in my house are slaving away making T-shirts to sell. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't have a sweatshop here. Um, they're just being really. <laughs> they're being really quiet and uh, reading books and uh, just hanging out. They just they know to to be quiet while we're doing this. Um, hopefully, eventually, we'll introduce more people and do get to meet everybody. But uh, thank you for your feedback. I should say they are all wearing pajamas. Yes, the whole crew is in pajamas. Um, we got one from Michael. I was inspired by your call for fan fiction on the site, and while I would certainly love to write Bruce into a story, I'm afraid I don't have much time right now. So, the next to the last best thing is what you get. It's a sonnet. It is legal iambic pentameter and English style, complete with envoi and tornada. I don't know what that is, and yes, I did study literature. Please do what you like with it, Bruce. Hi, Alby. Love your podcast, or whoever is reading this. If you want some of my original, award-winning, and decent, much better short fiction to read, let me know. I have some stuff right up Bruce's alley. <laughs> in the meantime, I will keep championing your literary cause. Take care, friends. Thank you, Mike. And he wrote us a sonnet, and I'm going to read it here. What is a sonnet? It's a poem. Okay. It's just a style of poetry. Okay. <clears throat> it's called It's Not Easy Being Bruce. It's not. Um, it's not easy being a web celeb, catering to all the lurking masses. Bedtime is all about sex, lust, and death, sometimes vampires and unclothed asses. Staying up late, I grow tired myself, but never tired of myself. Oh, no. I sip tea and light candles by my shelf, thinking how this dirty night's tale will go. Satin pajamas, leather chair for one. I have extra smut waiting in the wings. There are stories to be told, filled with fun. Wait till you hear how badly his whip stings. <laughs> it's not easy being Bruce, my friend. Uncomfortably is how this will end. Okay. Very good. I like that. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool. Thank you. Um, if anybody ever wants to send in comments, questions, emails, hate mail, fan mail, poetry, Whatever pictures, <laughs> um, we are at uh, bedtime. <laughs> We're at bedtime with Bruce, right? Yes. Bedtime with Bruce at Gmail. Oh, sorry, Gmail. At gmail.com. Uh, so yeah, please send us your comments, questions. If you hate us, whatever. If you love us, um, you can definitely tell that Mike watches the show. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, the that's, whole show. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, I like that. That's real cool. Can we talk about the show so far, uh, the other episodes that you've done? Like, uh, what's your whole take on the whole thing? Okay, we started, the original idea was that we were going to read three hours a night. And we were going to read an hour of literature. And we were going to do an hour of erotic literature. And then we were going to do an hour of homoerotic literature. Because we don't know what people want to hear. And uh, the, the original idea was we were going to be a voice in the night for people going to bed and reading stories. Um, so we started with The Great Gatsby, because I've never read The Great Gatsby. And I thought it was time to do that. And that actually recently became public domain. So we thought we'd start with that. Uh, then we started reading, for our erotic literature, we started reading... The Secret of Black Oaks, which was set in pre-Civil War Alabama, and had a lot of uh, a lot of everything in it. A lot of homoeroticism, a lot of chick on chick, dude on dude, uh, black on white, cousin on cousin. I mean, there was <laughs> a 
there was it had it all. Um, then we did uh, for our homoerotic literature, we did the House of the Vampire, which was the first homoerotic vampire book, and it was written around the turn of the century, and it was more of a psychological. I mean, the vampire was a, a psychological vampire. <laughs> And it wasn't very gay. Like I don't understand why it was considered homoerotic. It this, it in, unless it said homoerotic, you wouldn't know it was homoerotic. I would have, I, I would have described it more as just this really sad, weird story. I wouldn't have, I if right if it didn't say homoerotic in the description, I wouldn't have even known. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I mean, I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but it was our first show, and we we kept an open mind, but it was just, I was looking for more, you know, <laughs> throbbing, pounding, <laughs> grunting, uh, sweat, probably. I don't know. I, I've never actually read homoerotic literature. I mean, I guess I have now, but it really wasn't what I thought it was going to be, and I don't think it was what the people thought it was going to be. But it, you know what? We did it, and... I promise if we ever do anything else and call it homoerotic literature, I will pre I will pre-screen it. And if the word penis doesn't appear at least a hundred times or some variation, we won't do it. That'll be our that'll be our our measure. What are the variations for penis? <laughs> really? Just just for example, I mean um cock. Cock. Like a rooster <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Like a rooster. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know what they call it in homoerotic literature. Mm -hmm. I'd say probably cock and penis would be the, probably, the main ones. Yeah. Probably not a lot of just penis. Then it would be too technical. Penis, anus. Right. Taint. I'm sure there's a lot of taint. I don't think action. taint. I don't think taint is a is a like medical term. It, no. No. Really? It's not no. on WebMD or anything. I I think if you type in the word taint, they're not going to recognize it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that means taint your ass and it taints your balls. Oh, okay. Like it's a it's a slang word. All right. I don't think cock is a medical term either. I think penis is. I think my doctor did call it that once during an exam. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I think about it, he was getting a little more friendly than he should have. Was it more like no? Position. No, it's like grasp your balls, feel your cock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like I had to turn my head. And I thought I was going to cough, but it was like I had to have my head turned for, I think it was like nine minutes. <laughs> but it was one of those, I was before I had insurance, so it was like a discount. It was a discount. Uh, doctor's you, might feel, you might feel a slight pinch. <laughs> it's okay, I'm a doctor. Well, I thought it was reputable because it was like one of those booths at the flea market. And they have the shed and the curtain. <laughs> but you live, you learn. Sure, okay. Lesson here. I mean, I, I didn't mean for the show to take this turn this early, but okay. Don't get your hernia check at a flea market in a booth with a curtain. <laughs> well, if it takes more than if it takes more than a minute, you're being molested. And I never had to cough. Right. You know, do you want me to cough? He's like, sure. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Cough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cough. Whatever. Yeah. Please. Hmm. Just. <laughs> He took my temperature weird too, but I, I just I don't want to even remember that part. I've never had a prostate check, and I'm I'm 41, and it's time. Mm. And every time I go to the doctor for a checkup or physical or whatever, he always says, "My doctor's cool." He's like, "It's about time for you to get a prostate check. Do you want to do that today, or do you want to do that next time?" And it, every time I go, he <laughs> he just says, "You want to do this next time?" And I'm always like, "Yeah, let, that's fine. Let's do that. If that's your if that's your if you feel comfortable." Putting this off for another year, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, you look pretty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys that don't want to check each other. Two guys prostate. that don't. Right. And, and I mean, he's. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if I get prostate cancer, <laughs> it's going to be because my doctor doesn't want to do it and I don't want to do it. And yeah, I don't know who's at fault there. But he always gives me the option. Well, we've had a good day. Do you, do you need to do you want to check that? No. I'm cool. We, let's do it next time. If your doctor was a beautiful female doctor. I still don't know if I'd want her to stick her finger in my asshole. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand it needs to happen. I get that. Everyone's had it happen. I'm just terrified of it. 
I, as most people are. I mean, of the actual act or the result. <laughs> no, I feel pretty good that I don't have prostate cancer because I like to gamble, and I, my odds are pretty good that I don't have it. But more about the act, I think. Mm -hmm. I just check myself. <laughs> Do you use gloves? No. God. All right. I don't know what I'm checking for. You don't know what you're checking for either. Like, <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. There could be a lump. I'd be like, I don't know. Is that a lump? Is no, that a that's a lump. No, that's my small intestine. What I had for lunch No, that's yesterday? my colon. Okay, that's that's good. Yeah, I wouldn't know. That's the thing. Yeah, and I don't know. But it doesn't stop me from trying to figure it out. So, okay. So we were talking about literature and <laughs> we jumped into this. So you, get, you don't know where this show is going to go. It can go anywhere. It can. <laughs> and probably will. And will. Um, I see you brought a little nightcap. Yes. This is, uh, well, it's bedtime, and I like to wear my nightcap at bedtime. Do you really sleep in that? Um, sometimes. Really? Yes, but usually only when I'm intoxicated. <laughs> you can take that off. Take it's, it off? It's hot. Yeah, it's it hot is very here. warm in here. Is we have the air conditioning off uh, because of the sound. You don't want to hear <laughs> the sound all the whole time. I'm going to go turn the air conditioning on. I'll be right back. All right. He'll be right back. Talk to the people. Uh, well, welcome to Bedtime with Albie. And um, I'm going to put my hat back on because he's not in here to see it. So uh, let me know if he's coming back. <clears throat> all right. We have some uh, viewer man. Wait, he read that already. Uh, I don't know what to do. Hmm. So do you like the website? There's archives, and you can go back and watch our older shows, or you can uh, just go by book and see Mr. Bruce read every book, like, in order. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel. There's a link on that from the – oh, he's coming back. What would you guys talk about? Um, just a little bit of – nothing to do with the hat. <laughs> All right. Is our producer still awake? Yes, okay. she is awake. Okay, so what else? Rodney King died. He did? Yes, he did. Um, how did it happen? Wait, don't. It, was it a police brutality thing or? No. No? No. It's like heart disease? No, he was found, <laughs> he was found, I'm not laughing, it's not funny, but he, he was found dead at the bottom of the swimming pool. And they say, they said there was no sign of foul play, but neighbors said they heard emotions, crying, a big noise, a big splash, and then the next thing they know, the paramedics are there, and they're pulling them up out of the pool. Uh, so this just happened uh, recently. Is recently, it, yeah. Is a cause of death? Or... Right now, it's you would think being at the bottom of the yeah, pool. I mean, that's, that, yeah. I, it's not conducive to life. I don't think he was. But when I was reading about it, he got in more trouble like after that, like he's been in trouble since the the whole Rodney King thing for mostly alcohol related stuff. I mean, he didn't. I know he's gotten pulled over before and that makes news every time he gets pulled over and he gives him a hard time. He's like, I'm Rodney King. What are you going to do? You know? <laughs> and, you know, once once you had that happen to you, you get a kind of a free pass so you can kind of use it, I guess. I guess I that's the that's our big celebrity death. I, I mean, I don't even want to call him a celebrity. That's the star. What do you call it? I would call him a I wouldn't call him a pop culture figure. He was a he was a character from the 90s, a personality from the 90s, uh, uh, just a big it was more of an incident than a person, I guess. Like I, I don't know. I think his name is more famous. I don't think I could pick out his face like if I had to. Really? Yeah. From that video where he's like, "Can't we all just get along?" That's famous. Maybe. I mean, that's Yeah, that's true. That is actually that's trivial pursuit question material right yeah, there. Like, like the nineties or was it nineties or eighties? No, it was the nineties. Nineties, okay, yeah. I think on the DVD edition that clip might be on there. <laughs> it might be. What is Bruce's favorite board game? Oh, nobody has ever asked me that question. I'm gonna say. Hmm. I love Trivial Pursuit. Trivial Pursuit. Mm -hmm. But I can never find people that are good at playing it. Mm -hmm. And, like, I have this weird talent with trivia. 
And everybody thinks it makes me so smart. Oh, you're so smart. I'm really not. I just know a lot of trivia. I know a lot of little things about a lot of different things, but not enough to like string together any sort of career. <laughs> so yeah, I'm great at Trivial Pursuit. Um, I like Monopoly if everybody that's playing is into it. I like the classics. I like Risk. Risk was so much fun when I was a kid. I've never played. Really? Yeah. What, what's it about? Taking over the world. Oh, armies. That's cool. Mostly rolling dice. I'm trying to think what other... I don't even know. What about you? What's your favorite board game? I do like Trivial, Pur uh, Trivial Pursuit, but I don't do the whole board game and the pieces of pies. I just sit with the cards and ask back and forth. Um, I love Monopoly. I have like 19 different versions of Monopoly. Sure. But I just can't make it through a whole game. Like three hours in, everybody's done and mad and just wants to go yeah. home. It's hard to keep people involved. I mean, the same thing with Risk. Risk will go eight hours. I mean, I, I went to boarding school. When I was a kid, and we'd stay up all night and play Risk and never be done. It would just never end. <sighs> I liked Uno. Uno? Drinking Uno. We turned it into a drinking game in college. In college, everything is turned into a drinking game. Probably. That's right. Doing laundry is a drinking game. Woo! Panties yeah. in the dryer! <laughs> Everybody drink? <laughs> Pink panties drink, too! What about Las Vegas? You've been to Las Vegas. Love Las Vegas. Um... It was weird. From everything I've seen on television and the movies, I always thought it was like this huge, big city where skyscrapers everywhere, kind of like New York or whatever. But when you're flying in, you just see this one road with all these large hotels down the road and then a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. But yeah, I loved it. I mean, they don't have a – they have a downtown, like Fremont Street, yeah. and that, it's just got more hotels around it, and then that's it. It's You're right. It's just, But it's a sprawling town. Mm-hmm. When you look at all the surrounding cities, but you're right, the strip is that's definitely the the thing. And you can see that. I love flying in at night. Mm -hmm. And I always get to I always miss the window. I'm always having to look across the aisle out other people's windows. <laughs> and um Yeah. I went to Fremont Street, but in the daytime the first time. And I was like, this is disappointing. Yeah, well, it's it's not that much better at night. Yeah. They do that time. laser show. Yeah, but I saw that. They got a zip line now that you can ride down under the uh, canopy. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it costs like 15 or 20 bucks. And it doesn't go all the way down. It just goes through one stretch of the thing. But you can do it while the laser show is going on mm -hmm. and, and just be flying above the crowd and looking up. And I mean, it looks kind of cool. I have to say, the best thing about Vegas is the buffets. Uh, every night I had all you can eat prime rib. And uh, my first impression of the town, I think I was in town maybe an hour and I went to just a normal place I thought to have a steak turned out to be a, a club where women take their tops off and stuff and uh, one of them put their um, boobs boob in my mouth Tate in your mouth in my mouth and I was like I'm not where I'm from anymore I'm not married to you this is wrong yeah you're she, not my wife or my mother she didn't see it <laughs> she didn't see it that way and she then she expected money, so I, I gave her money. Where I, were you at? Um, I think it was on Fremont Street. There was a and they were feeding you. You had did you really think that, or did you know it was a strip club when you went in? I knew it was a strip club. Okay, tell I, the I, I went there first. Don't insult these people. I'm sorry. I went there first. I got off the plane out of the airport. Hotel dropped off the bags. What hotel did you stay at? Um, the Excalibur. I loved it. <laughs> Thunder, Thunder from Down Under. Great show. <laughs> The Australian strippers? Yes. It's kind of like um, Chippendales, but they're all Australian. <laughs> I okay. think some of them weren't. They were faking. <laughs> they were faking it? I love the Luxor. I, I'm going to stay there next time, I think. I stayed at the Luxor. Hmm? It was all right. It was the nicest room we'd stayed at, but they were kind of shitty to us at the front desk. Really? And I was cranky. I mean, we got off the plane. We got there at like 1 in the morning. And it, it just, we were cranky and tired, and they were messing with me at the front desk, and I just uh, I was so pissed off. And we didn't get a room in the pyramid, which, in retrospect, it really wasn't that big of a deal. We had a nice room mm -hmm. in one of the towers. But if you're going to stay at the Luxor, get one of the rooms that are slanted. Yeah. Just going to think that'd be kind of cool. Well, that's kind of the whole point of staying there, right? Yeah, stay in the pyramid. Because all the other uh, buildings are square. Yeah, they're just like regular hotels. Did you go on the Eiffel Tower and do all that stuff? No, I haven't done the Eiffel Tower. I did the, we went up to the stratosphere. 
So it has the like space the restaurant? Thing. Well, we the top of the stratosphere is where the restaurant is. It's a revolving restaurant. And it's the it's like the big uh, the space needle. And it uh, it revolves slowly. So you eventually can see the whole spread. And uh, yeah, we had dinner up there. And uh, then they have rides on top of it. Like uh, they have a ride that it's like a like a roller coaster cart, and you get into it, and the thing basically just tips you over the side. So now you're looking down at the, the ground, and the the ride it just goes forward, and then it stops, and you're just suspended there over the side of the building. And then the, the guy controlling it usually will drop it up again, and you'll drop <laughs> some more, and and you're just you're just dangling off the side of this building. And then they had one um, they had one that shoots you up the needle and drops you back down. And then uh, they had another one, you know those rides at like cheap carnivals that swing you around? Like you're yeah. strapped in a swing and it swings you around. On top they of have, the thing? They have one of those that just goes off the side and swings you around like up in the air. And as we were eating dinner at this really nice restaurant, you know, it, <laughs> depending on where we are, you'd look up and you'd just see people's feet like swinging out <laughs> above the, uh, the window. <laughs> we went up on the deck. And it was very windy, and uh, like real windy, like 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 scary windy. And I went over the edge, but that was that was enough for me. I, I didn't need to ride anything. I don't think I could do it because whenever I'm on like a tall building or something tall, high up, I'm not so much afraid of heights, but I'm afraid of that little voice in my head that says, "Jump, jump, try it." I, I have that same voice. I think everybody. Does. I have that same voice. It's like just fucking jump. Just yeah, and you do it. Like eighty percent of your brain saying no, that's stupid. No, why that would hurt us. But the other part of that, I'm like, Jesus, I just want to do it. You totally could right now if you wanted to. I could jump. There's nobody stopping me. There's no the rail isn't big enough for me not to crawl over. Yeah, so I don't. I try not to go on anything. I'm actually surprised more people don't kill themselves that way. You never hear about that. No. You never hear about that in Vegas, and I think they cover it up. Um, What happens in Vegas? I read a book about the Luxor when they first built it. And somebody came there with the intention to kill himself. And they had an issue with people jumping inside the pyramid like, and, and doing it. If you go there now, there's nets. They have nets like strung up all around there. So even if you did, which makes it even more tempting now because you're not gonna die. Like, like let's do this, let's, let's jump. Let's, you know. I, I'm surprised there's not a guy there with the sign, $10. Right, <laughs> right. They monetize everything there. But they, I think they cover that up a lot. And the, the story I read, the guy, uh, he met a girl while he was there. He won a bunch of money. I mean, and he didn't want to kill himself anymore. Like, it just, it turned him around somehow. And and I'm like, really? Because that, that never happens to me. I mean, you meet girls, but they want money. And you meet gambling, and it takes your money. And, yeah, I've never... I don't think I've ever come away depressed from Vegas, but I've never come back really ecstatically undepressed. I don't know. It's never changed my life. I came back completely broke, but smiling from ear to ear about it. Oh, no. It's a great place. Yeah. I, we try to go every year. Oh, wow. Um, I haven't been in a couple of years, um, but yeah, I love it. Can't get enough of it. I'd love to live there. I have every season of CSI <laughs> just because I like pretending like I'm watching something that's actually in Las Vegas. That's I know it's not. I know it's filmed somewhere else, but they do have scenes in Las Vegas. Really? I don't think the whole show's filmed. There. I think Probably it's mostly not. in Hollywood. Yeah. But that's where I get all my information on Las Vegas is CSI. And they CSI is weird. They use like they use real casinos and then they have these made up casinos that don't exist at all, that never existed. And they talk about it, and they'll talk about casinos that used to exist, real ones from the old days, and then they'll talk about fake ones that used to exist. And it's just... It, Is it because, like, they have a negative connotation and, like, no brand wants to be associated with, like, death at their hotel? No, because some some of them do, you know, like, they had a they had an episode at the, the Gold Nugget, which is on Fremont Street. Right. And they have a swimming pool, and I want to stay there someday. I've never stayed at the Gold Nugget, and... I want to stay there just because of the pool. They have this giant like aquarium in the middle of the pool. The pool's in the middle of the hotel in this big courtyard. And they have a bar and they have a swim up, they have blackjack out there. I mean, it's like a whole party. 
it's the type of place where they check your ID before you go out into the pool. Like it's it's a wow. big deal. And they have this giant like shark tank. And the shark tank is a slide. You just you walk up the steps and it it's a slide and you slide down in the middle of this tube. It's in the middle of the shark tank, surrounded by all the fish and the shark, and it lets you out in the pool. And I just think that's I think that'd be fun. I just want to ride that slide at least once in my life. Mm -hmm. And they did a they did an episode of CSI in that pool. And there was a, a girl that got bit by a shark. Like there was a pool party, and this shark came swimming through everybody and just ripped this girl in half and ate her. And they were they called it the gold nugget. Spoiler alert though. <laughs> I'm sorry, spoiler alert. Or does it happen like at the beginning of the show? At the beginning of the show. Oh, okay. That's how the show starts. Have you never seen CSI? No, I've seen all up until the shark episode. Yeah. All right. That must be a recent episode. Unless I missed it. I don't one. know. Maybe. I have it. On DVD or DVD. Oh, that's cool. DVD. CSI available on Amazon.com. Click here. Click on the link right below here. us. <laughs> It'll be there. Uh, producer, put that up there. Okay. We uh what else? Let's talk about Vegas some more. Um the idea of living there seems appealing, but we live in Florida and people come here. For vacation and they really enjoy it but when you live here it's not as fun so would that take the magic away if you actually well I, I don't know that after talking to people that live out there and every time I go I, I interview everybody I deal with if we're in a taxi and the taxi driver's cool I'll talk to him I'll just ask him questions I always ask him the same I have, I have this, like this list of questions and everybody knows when they get in the cab with me what what I'm gonna ask the guy so it's like a reverse cash cab Kind of, except I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hitting money for every question. That would be cool, though. <laughs> okay, we're gonna play cash cab, Mr. <laughs> cab driver. <laughs> so I get in a cab and I'll say, I start. How are you doing today? How's your day? You know, they never ever say my day is great. I'm having a great day. But I always ask them how their day is going, and then I say, Are you keeping busy? How's business been? And sometimes they'll say, well, there's been a convention in town. There's 20,000 gynecologists in town or you know, whatever. They always know all the whatever's happening, where the action is. Or they'll say, you know what? I'm busy as hell. I'm just driving back and forth to the airport all day long. You know, hey, that's great. You're making money. Well, you'd think so, but blah, 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 blah. they always have a reason why they're not making money. And everyone that's always said that they're not making money, they're saying, well, I have... I have six kids and a wife, and I only make a thousand dollars a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, you're really not supposed to be able to raise a family of seven or six or whatever on a thousand dollars a week. But for you and someone, a thousand bucks—I don't make a thousand bucks a week. I, I, I make. So they're saying it like it's bad. You think they're still? Yeah, they're, they're crying like, about they're crying about trying to raise a family on a thousand bucks a week. You think like, so? You tip them more? Or no, just, they no. I think because I ask them, and they're just they're just telling me. I mean, I'll tell you. I, I won't complain to you if you ask me how my life is. I'm not going to tell you the truth. Right. Like, oh, my God, I'm just, I'm just going through some stuff. But they, they tell me, and I, I say, you know what, I'm not trying to pry, but I'm, I'm interested in being a cab driver. I've always wanted to be a cab driver in a town like Las Vegas. And so I, I ask them that, and then I'll, I'll usually, if they're cool, if we're going back and forth and we got time, I'll say, tell us a story. Just tell me a story. Uh, sometimes you're like, "What do you mean?" Just tell me a story about driving a cab. Tell me, tell me the what's the best tip you ever got. And they'll tell, and then usually it's somebody like, like Sugar Ray Leonard got in my cab and he tipped me a hundred bucks. I drove him to the airport. You know, real nice guy. And then they'll they'll tell me the flip side of the story. And then I drove this guy. He didn't he didn't tip me at all. You know, so they they've got the good and the bad. You know, I'm, sometimes they'll tell me stories like, well, one time this couple, they were banging in the back of my cab. And like, that's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. fascinating to me. Um, like that show, uh, Taxi Cab Confessions, where yeah. the cab driver gets people talking and they start just talking about their life. And then they sign the sheet at the end. <laughs> yeah. I saw the one where there was a guy who was dressed up as a girl and he was a hooker or something. It was very interesting. I... 
I don't. I didn't watch a lot of those shows. But... I think my TiVo just records weird things. <laughs> you know, your TiVo just decides for it. How people would really like this show. I think I'm gonna. Well, I'm think I'm gonna tape this for him. It's got a transgendered uh, lady <laughs> of the night. It's got Las Vegas and transgender. Yes. Let's let's just tape this for Albie. And if your TiVo's mad at you, it's just gonna t- just tape shit, cooking shows, mm-hmm. porn for fat people. Porn for fat people. Have you ever seen the behind the scenes of Las Vegas, like how it works and that kind of stuff? I've seen some. They have uh, on the History Channel. They do shows about like modern technology, and I don't remember what the theme of the show was. I think it was underwater or fountains or. I don't know what the theme was, but they were at the fountains at the Bellagio, and there's a crew of about, I want to say, 18 guys that m- monitor and work on the, the whole fountain show, like the whole team of people in scuba gear down there working on those those fountains. And they're not fountains. They're cannons. They're water cannons. Well, that's what everybody goes there to see. That's their thing. No, of course. I get it. That's but, like their pirate ship or their moving statue. or whatever. Right. Uh, I thought this was a – I watched a show about – Maybe it was just a Vegas show. Maybe it was just the Modern Marvels Las Vegas. I think because I the that, yeah. the whole street is built on like there's tunnels underneath the entire strip, and it's for flooding because it's the middle of the desert. So if it rains, you know, oh, if yeah. it rains just an inch or two, it screws up the whole city. And it's a valley, right? Las Vegas, the valley, right? So it would definitely fill up with water if it ever rained there. Vegas doesn't mean the valley. What does Vegas mean? Um, meadows. The meadows. So, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to punk you out. I'm not good at math or... Spanish. Is it Spanish? I thought it was French. But again. I, I think it means the meadows. Shit. Okay. Well, somebody told me it meant the valley because it's surrounded by mountains. Well, it is. Okay. Yeah, I well, think it was well, a cab driver, but I don't know how reliable they are. Okay. Well, for the next show, we will look that up. Modern Marvels. Las Vegas. Yes. Click down here. <laughs> it, it won't be Amazon.com. It won't be that much money. Buy that. It's not any more expensive. We just get about four cents every time you buy something. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, we are completely advertising supported. So if you want to help us out and support us, buy something from our ads. Or you, you know, can make a donation down that way. We also have a wish list. I wasn't going to promote this because it's <laughs> shameful. It's but, not uh, about Something to talk about. We have a wish list on uh, Amazon, and uh, you can click on it if you ever want to buy a pair of pajamas for us or a camera or a tripod or just anything to support the show. Eventually, the whole show is going to look different. This is actually my poker room, and we're going to change it to be more of a bedtime with Bruce studio, but we can't afford to buy a fireplace right now. But we are going to. Wouldn't it make it hotter in here? Yeah, but we'll get we'll get sexier pajamas. Okay. Uh, Vegas. What else? Where have you stayed? You stayed at the Excalibur. Excalibur. What shows did you see? I have seen. We always try to see at least one Cirque du Soleil show when we go. And I've seen. I've seen Ka at the MGM. What's the theme of that one? The, that's actually the only Cirque du Soleil show that has a story. Like, the whole thing is one big story. And it's about this prince and princess, brother and sister, who get kidnapped and separated from each other. And that was pretty much all I got out of it. Um, But, like, the stage, the stage is the star of the show. The stage goes, like, up and down. Mm -hmm. But it also turns, like, this to where people are swinging on sticks that pop out of it and falling down. I mean, the whole stage, the stage is incredible. Um... I've seen O at the Bellagio, and that's the one that's in water. Okay. And that was incredible. I can't suggest that enough. If you're going to Vegas, go go see O. Uh, and then we saw we saw the uh, the Beatles one, Love. Love, yes. I wanted to see that one. I would uh, I I would describe it as beautiful, and I don't use that word very often. It was beautiful. It was it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen, and you have to like the Beatles. I mean, it's all Beatles, but it's it's incredible. They don't do a bad show. Okay, they do. There is one <laughs> bad show, and I have seen that one. Um, is it the one I saw? What'd you say? Zumanity. 
No, you saw Zumanity? Yeah, it was awesome. No, that's not the one. I imagine that's... I want to see that one. That's the sex one. That's How the naked one. How can you not see one. that one first? It's like naked ladies I, swinging around. But there's also naked guys. Right. You might like that, Bruce. Some uh, wang. Um, but amazing show. Amazing. I saw Chris Angel, and that's a Cirque du Soleil show, technically. It's put on by Chris Angel and Cirque du Soleil. And it, it was probably one of the worst live shows I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe it's still around. I can't believe so many people go to it. I used to love Chris Angel, but now I just hate him. I think he's a prick. Okay, there you have it, world. We are calling out Chris Angel. <laughs> You're a prick. You're a no-talent prick. He really I'm, is. I'm just kidding. I, well, he's... He's a, my opinion. He's I think he's good for like what he originally started doing, like the whole street magic thing. Mm -hmm. I think that was David Blaine. David Blaine is cool as hell. He's cool. Um, Chris Angel, I mean, no, he's good, but I don't think his I don't think it translates to a Las Vegas like stage show. I really like his stuff. I I've been a magician my whole life. I don't I don't know if you knew that about me. Um but Growing up, you idolized certain magicians, and he was like the newer generation and the hip and cool one. But then a few years back, they had a reality show for like magicians, and he was one of the judges. And I remember that. Yeah. And instead of saying, wow, that was really good, or I didn't quite like that, he'd be like, here's how you did it. That's stupid. And I'm like, that's the first rule of magic is you don't expose. Right. Don't talk magicians. about Fight Club. Exactly. And he did, and I would just, his handler shouldn't have let him on live TV if. He was going to be doing that kind of stuff. So I lost all respect for Chris Angel. That's valid. Yeah. Fuck Chris Angel. There you go. Fuck you, Chris Angel. <laughs> and, unless he made a public apology, I don't know about it. So. Are you are you watching us, Chris Angel? We're calling you out on bedtime with Bruce. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're moving into some pretty heavy stuff here. We're we're challenging. I have. To, can I say something? I have to apologize, and if you do love Chris Angel, you click here. For Mind Freak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything you want, actually, they sell down here. Amazon.com. Right okay. okay. Um, Sorry. But his show wasn't very good. Don't go see it. Chris Angel, hope you're watching me. On the other hand, Penn and Teller. Love them. You saw Penn and Teller? I wanted to see them. Oh, okay. Well, I, I want to see them. I spent uh, $1,000 in two days on the Star Trek experience because that's why I went there originally. Which is no longer there. No longer there. It's a shame. I don't know what they put in place of it. That was at the uh, Las Vegas Hilton. Yes. Uh, they had Barry Manilow playing there at the same time. Pretty cool. Barry Manilow is still there, but he's at the... He's at the Paris now. Oh. I think. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> Barry Manilow is there. Um... I want to say Donnie and Marie are at the Flamingo. Um, Carrot Top and Chris Angel are at the Luxor. Right. Uh, they also have Fantasy, I think, that show there. At the Luxor? Yeah, I went there yeah, and saw that. that's Sexy Chicks. Yeah, they take their top off. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not really hard to figure out. If, if a woman right. will take her top off, I'll pay money. I'll tell you, Karen and I were talking about it. We want to see a female impersonator. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. I think, uh, I mean, there's some famous ones out there. <laughs> we, we want to see one. We saw, okay, here's a show we saw. And it's not there anymore. It was, uh, oh, what the hell was it called? It was uh, Absinthe. Okay, I like the beverage. Yes. Okay. Absinthe is a liqueur that's illegal in America. It was, it was an opium-based liqueur. You can buy it in Europe. Um, Something to do with wormwood? I don't know. It, okay. it, they, it, it causes hallucinations. Like it, it, it messes you up. And it's green. Have you tried it? No, I've okay. never tried it. They have an American version of it, but it's, it's just green liquor. It's not okay. real absinthe. So if you're from England, send us some. You can't. No. That's illegal. Don't do that. Don't do that. But you can't anyway. It's just you can't ship it. They it's not, they it's not in it. America. I mean, you'd have to smuggle it in your luggage. I'm not recommending anyone do that. Please don't. If anyone's looking for something about that, though, the movie Traffic, available right down here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Absent. It was in this tent at Caesar's Palace. 
with this wood fence around it. I mean, it looked like a construction site when I walked past it the first time. And it was this tent from the 30s that Marlena Dietrich actually performed in in Germany. Wow. It was called a Spiegel tent. And the show, like you, you paid your money and you go in and you just you sit down in these folding chairs that are around a stage that was slightly bigger than this table, just this little round stage. And the whole show was on that stage. And it was mostly like uh, Eastern European acrobats. And, you know, like the real strong Russian guys that, that balance on each other's noses and, and, and like tightrope acts. They strung a tightrope right over something. If anyone had fallen, they would have fallen in your lap. Mm -hmm. um, there, were, there were boobs. It was an adult show. I mean, it was the, the humor was, and it was all held together by this guy called the Gazillionaire, and he was the MC, and he had a gold tooth, and he was this cheesy, <laughs> this slimy MC, and he had a ditzy sidekick named Penny, mm -hmm. and they were friggin' hilarious. Like it was, it was, it was by far the best pickup show. We call those pickup shows. Like when we go to Vegas, mm -hmm. we book shows ahead of time. Right. Well, you have to. So if we're going to see Cirque du Soleil, we we have the tickets three months in advance. Then we do pickup shows, which are while we're out there, you want to go, you want to go catch some other show. Let's go see that. Let's go see that. So yeah, that was the best pickup show we've ever seen, and it's it's touring. If you ever get a chance, if Absinthe comes to your town, go see it. It's it was awesome. Look it up on uh, on YouTube. They have clips from it. It it was just it was great. Um, restaurants. Did you eat anywhere good? Um, I think you recommended a buffet. <laughs> that I went to. Which one? Circus Circus, maybe? Really? I don't know. Where was it? Caesar's Palace? Mm. I don't know, but I went to one place you recommended. I had the tiramisu. Um, that was good. I didn't know I liked tiramisu until I ate it there. You know, you either like it or don't like it. Um, restaurants. I went to Fat Burger. Where was that? Um, right across the street from the Luxor, I think. Okay. Um, just because I had seen it on this real life television show, like MC Hammer and Emmanuel Lewis were eating at Fat Burger, like the month before, so I had to go there. We always go to In and Out Burger. That's a little bit past the end of the one side of the strip or something. It's off the strip. It's not okay. on the strip, but it's down from uh, I want to say the New York, New York, which is Tropicana Boulevard. If you take Tropicana Boulevard up to the freeway, it's right over there. And we took it. We took a limo there. We took. <laughs> Last time we went to Vegas, we went with uh, with one of our friends. We went. We always go with a big group of people. And one of the guys that went this time, he didn't like riding in cabs. So everywhere we went, he would just he'd just go negotiate with a limo driver that happened to be standing there. Hey, and he'd come back and say, "Okay, we got it. We're gonna take this limo. This guy's gonna take us." And we'd all just throw twenty bucks up and pay for the limo. That's cool. So we took a limo to Fat Burger, or not <laughs> to In and Out Burger, and. Uh, he waited for us. I mean, we, he, the deal was you'd take us there and bring us back and we'll pay you 60, 80 bucks, whatever it was. And I offered him, I was like, hey, let me buy you dinner. You know, no, I don't eat that crap. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right, more for me then. Awesome. Really? I, I wish there was an In-N-Out Burger here. I, I, I would open up an In-N-Out Burger franchise. In-N-Out Burger, if you were watching, I would love to bring you to Florida. Somewhere in Florida. I, I, I Yes. <laughs> no, In-N-Out Burger, great. Great burger joint. Fast food. It's mm -hmm. a chain. I eat there. I uh, eat a lot at the stands, like hot dog stands and like candy apples. I went and ate candy apples in every hotel, and they're like $25. Elby and I are both diabetic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> little, little known fact about <laughs> us, and uh, we're going to sort of unravel why we are diabetic, and part of it is Albie's addiction to $25 candy apples. I don't eat them anymore. Well, sometimes. <laughs> Not as often. Yeah, we, we always try to eat at at least one nice restaurant when we go and interesting restaurants. Like we don't do McDonald's and Subway and all that. We just, I mean, no way. And we always have, there's always one night where I just, I go to bed early because I just need to, to survive. And I get a crap ton of room service. Because they always comp it off anyway for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you're Bruce, we eat like pigs 
literally like with our hands just like we just make a mess of everything and eat until we can eat no more and then i always take the cart out into the hallway and i move it like five doors down <laughs> to someone else's door so nobody thinks that i did that and i don't think pigs eat with their hands they, i don't know do we, pigs even they have don't hands? eat with forks no, and that's my point like, you stick their i just eat we buy a lot of finger food like i'm not buying steak i'm buying pizza wings nachos three different desserts i mean yeah, because I'm up, I'm up early too. Every when I go to Vegas, if I wake up at 4:45, it's time to get up. A.M. or P.M. A.M. I'll wake up at 4:45 and I'm down at the tables by 5:30. I did love that the whole city is 24 hour. Yeah. Like I don't drink, but I didn't drive. If the you whole wanted week, to, the whole week I was there, I did have a few drinks because I wasn't driving anywhere. No, it's awesome. You can get prime rib yeah. 24 hours a day. There's some place in Vegas where you can get prime rib at 4:30 in the morning. I played a lot of video poker for a couple dollars here or there, and I'd make ten dollars, and I'd go have something to eat. It's pretty cool. I don't like video. I mean, I'll play video poker. I don't like it. I like live stuff. I need to have a dealer. I always think they're cheating me. Video poker. I kind of feel like I know what they're trying to give me. Like you'll have three hearts and like two random cards, so you go for the flush. You know, it's a computer. Okay. See, I, I'm the other way. I feel like the computer is <laughs> calculating how to cheat me, and this guy here just wants me to tip him. Yeah. I mean, he he wants me to he wants to he wants me to win. If I'm being cool with him, and I'm usually the first guy to tip, and I don't hand it to him, I make bets. Like I never I've never handed a dealer just here's some money for you. I make bets, so they're they've got to like. I mean, I don't believe in anything, but if it's out there, positive energy and all that. I want that dealer sending me some positive vibes. So you make a bet on their behalf? So yeah. if you win, they win. Yeah. If I'm playing blackjack, there's always like a little circle or a square where you put your bet. And then you put another bet outside the circle, like on the edge of the circle at the top. That's for them. And they know that. Mm -hmm. It's a separate bet. And that's totally above board legal. And Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, that's Because if I lose, the house gets that money too. It's all oh, That's all gone. The house gets that money. But if they win, the dealer gets that money. If they win, the the dealer gets that and he takes it. He he can't let it ride. He can't. I don't go. Oh wait, I I think I'll keep that after all. Uh -huh. It's that's his. Right. And then when I do when I do things like if I if I split cards, I'll split his bet. I'll put another bet down for him. If I double down on my bet, I'll double down for the dealer too. I just I'll do it. I do it. Does that work? Is have you noticed a difference? Absolutely. Okay. And they'll 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 help me out. Like if they if if I'm making a mistake or whatever, they'll tell me. If, especially if they're pulling for me mm -hmm. and it's cool because I'll, I'll sit there by myself and play and at the end of a session sometimes i've had dealers that just have this big stack of fives that i that they made they, they leave it there so i can see how much they're making off me and we we leave happy and usually when i start doing that other people at the table will jump in if they're not tipping it shames everybody else in so the dealers love it they're like yeah. okay cool this guy's okay now we're making some money let's let's so you've had some good luck on the, oh, yeah. on the flip side, have you ever had that moment where you're sweating and like losing everything and you don't know what to do? <laughs> yes. 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 I okay. I mean, every time I went into the high roller tables one time, the high roller room where it's just a bunch of empty tables and people sitting around waiting for someone to wander in where the minimum bet is $100. And I've gone in and, and, and with $300 <laughs> and just made $100 bets three times in a row. Like, okay, well, thank you very much. This was... Thank you for letting me be in this room. It certainly is nice. <laughs> the chair is, is is good. Thank you. And you lost the three hundred dollars. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. No way. I ever. I've never won that. At in a high roller room. I've made hundred dollar bets before and won them at regular tables. Okay. But when I go into the high roller room, I never. It it chews me up instantly. I was just always intimidated to go sit at a table. Right. But it was my first time, only time. So. Yeah. I think if you go with me, you will sit down at a table. I think the plan is not next year, but the year after. Okay, done. We'll book it. All right. Um, yeah, I and I always, I always play at twenty-five dollar tables though, and that's because I'm I like to play. I don't make twenty-five dollar bets necessarily, but I go higher than that. But I always play at a twenty-five dollar minimum because that sort of weeds out the the frat boys. Mm -hmm. I'll play at a five or a ten dollar table with. There's always one time where everyone at the with the group wants to sit down and play blackjack that doesn't gamble. So I'll go to like a cheap table and we'll just take over the whole table. 
and I'll, I will sit down with the intent, I'm going to take $100 to this table, and I'm going to lose it, because everyone around me is going to fuck this up, and we're going to lose. So do, does other people's hands at the table affect your hand in relationship to the dealer, or how does that work? Their hand doesn't. It's how they play it. Okay. It's what they do. Why? How? No. Well, I mean, the object of blackjack is to get to 21. Correct. Or the object of blackjack is to not bust and let the dealer bust. Okay. The dealer has to hit up to 17. So if the dealer has 16, the dealer has to take another card. If you have 16, you don't have to take another card. And sometimes you, you see both of your cards. Everyone at the table sees both your cards. You see one of the dealer's cards. You don't know what his bottom card is until you make your decision. Okay. Then he flips his card over. So you can look at what he's got. If he's got a 6, you assume that he has a 10 under there, and then he's going to have a 16. And then he's going to have to take a big card, and he's going to bust. So if you're sitting on anything like over a 10, over a 12, 12 or up, if you've got anything like that, you don't take another hit. Um, so you don't take another hit. You don't take another hit. And I don't. There's rules that you're supposed to play by, like like to how you make your bets and, and how you hit and don't hit. I don't always follow them, and I do okay. Like I'll just say, you know what? I think it's time for you to bust, and the dealer will bust. <laughs> and one time, it's one time at Caesars, I called three cards, and I was right on all three of them. And the pit boss came over, and I was like, no, 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 seriously, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I'm so sorry. And everybody, I mean, everyone's laughing. They knew I wasn't really, like, a card counter. But I was like, that's a six. And he flips it over, and it was a six. And I was like, oh, shit. Did you have, like, weird glasses on with a wire yes. out, a backpack with yep. an antenna sticking yep. out of it? And yep. Fake beard. Yeah. Okay. And so that, uh, yeah, that freaked me out. And uh, what are you looking at? Um, just It's a poker room. I got all sorts of poker stuff hanging out. All right. Well, it, you know what? Uh, we've just been told by our producer that we've gone an hour, and uh, that went by fast. It really did, and it was. I mean, I hope. I don't know. I don't know what you were expecting tuning into our show tonight, but we ended up talking about Las Vegas. Um, we might talk about it more in the future because we love it. Um, it's not going to be a Vegas show specifically, no. but uh, we'll talk about anything tomorrow. We'll have a different topic, and uh, but uh, yeah. Any any final thoughts? Um, I have a big man crush on you, Bruce. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's, I think that's as good a point to end on as any. Um, yeah, uh, join us. If you're seeing this on YouTube, uh, you can join us at bedtimewithbruce.com. Uh, we're just going to, I don't know what our schedule is going to be. We're just going to periodically post new material. And, um, yeah, contact us at bedtimewithbruce at gmail.com. With questions, comments, hate mail, whatever. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us tonight. Anything else you want to say to the good people of the world? Um, send me pajamas. I need pajamas. Uh, I'll wear anything. Uh, slip, brown <laughs> panties, moo moo, um, moo moo, matching moo moos. Hey. Uh, send him the really nice silk pajamas and send me funny ones, and I'll put on anything you want. Or just send us suggestions on what you want us to wear. We'll do it. Right. Uh, we're we're whores. I'd like to thank Michael and Ashley. Yep. Thank you so much. And please, everybody, write in. Send us your thoughts. Let us know what you're thinking. Possible topics for our show. We'll address it. If you have questions, if you got something you want to work out in your life, <laughs> send us an email. We'll we'll talk about it. We yeah. can make that the next topic. Uh, we'll talk an hour for an hour about your problem, and we'll try to solve it. Yeah. For entertainment yeah. purposes only. Yeah, we, we, we are not licensed therapists, and we are not successful in any way at fixing people's problems, but we'll give it a shot. All right, I feel good about this. Yeah, that was good. All, all right. right, Bruce. Thanks, Albie, and thank you all for joining us, and we will see you next time. Have good a good night. night.